What is up guys? I hope you're having a great day today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to find the correct exposure values for your resin. Let's go. How are you guys doing today? So as I mentioned in today's video, what we're going to be doing is getting the right exposure values for whatever resin you decide to print with. Just keep in mind and a fair bit of warning, we are going to be making some changes to your printer and the way it operates. So please make sure and pay attention, follow along with the right steps and you're going to be good to go. So I'm going to break this up into five separate steps. The first step is why would you want to do this? The second step is how does it work? The third step is actually running the calibration test. The fourth step is interpreting the results. And the fifth step is actually running a print and checking out how it actually came out. So let's move on to step number one. Why would you want to do a UV calibration test? Well, actually there are a number of reasons why you would want to do this. Let's say you got your printer and your first batch of resin just finished and you need to buy some new resin. This test will allow you to get the right UV exposure for the new resin. Secondly, you may have just had to replace your LCD screen and when you do that, because it's slightly different from the old one, you may want to run this test to make sure that you have the right calibration settings. Thirdly, you may have changed the UV LEDs inside your printer from the small square ones to maybe a UV array. By changing these hardware components inside of your printer, that is going to change the way the resin is going to be exposed. So by running this test, you'll find the right exposure numbers depending on the UV array that you choose. You may also want to add some dyes to your resin so that you may be able to mix up the colors or get the right colors that you want. As you add dyes or pigments to your resin, that changes the exposure value. And this test will allow you to get the right exposure values for the resin with the dyes, inks, or pigments that you added. Also, if you decide to print with a different layer height from say, let's say 50 microns to something like 25 microns, you are going to have to change the exposure values for your print. This test will allow you to get the right exposure values depending on the layer height that you choose. So those are five separate reasons why you'd want to run this test. So let's go to step two. How does this work? So essentially, the way this test operates is it turns off the wipe function or the lifting and retracting of the bill plate into the vat. So what happens is it exposes one layer and then it exposes the same layer again with some parts of the print missing and it keeps doing that as it reduces from 10 separate sections down to one. So by doing that, what is really happening is you are varying the exposure values for different parts of this print. Now you may ask, how do you disable this retract function where it prevents the build plate from moving up and down into the vat? That will be done by using a special G code in the zip file that we actually download. Once we run this G code file, that's going to prevent the build plate from going up and down back into the vat. Then we run our calibration test. And when we are finished with the calibration test, remember that you need to re-enable the lifting and retracting of the build plate so that when you run your real prints, the build plate actually lifts and returns into the vat. And that is the third file that you're actually going to be downloading in the zip file. So here is a list of the three files, one, two, three, that you will need when you have to actually perform this test. Point number three, how do we actually run this test? Well, what we need to do is we need to download some test files from GitHub and it's called the Resin XP Finder. What this does, it helps you to find the exposure, hence the XP, for your resin. 
so I will be placing a link to the GitHub files in the description below where you will be able to download these three files that are critical for us to get this test done. So the names of the files will be testmode.gcode and this is the one that actually disables the build plate from moving back up and down. Print mode which will re-enable the build plate from moving back up and down. And the third file is the important one that actually runs the test. The name of this file is too long for me to actually spell out and remember. So I'm going to put it on screen so you'll be able to see what they actually mean. The name of the file is resin test dot 50 U dot B 100 dot 2 dash 20 dot photon. So what does this mean? Well, the first part is self explanatory, which is it's a resin test. The second one 50 U is actually 50 microns. So you will find different versions of this particular file for the different layer heights that you plan to use. In this case, we typically use 50 microns when we print. So I'll be using this file, the 50 micron file for us to proceed with this test. The third value is B100. The B100 value is the amount of seconds the base layer is going to be cured for. Now the next point is particularly important. There are two numbers here. There's a 2 and a 20. So the 2 is what you call a multiplier and we'll get to that in a little bit. And the 20 is the number of seconds that we actually go to when we are doing the exposure. So this will be up to 20 seconds per layer on the exposure test that we are doing. And the last point, it's a photon file, dot photon. Now you would have seen recently that a number of files have been added to the folder and these are to assist for those of you who would like to print in different layer heights such as 25 microns or 10 microns. So point number four, we need to read the results. And here you can see from these results, my best value is actually number four. If I look at the column and I look at the individual components of this column, these tell me that this is the best exposure value and this is the column that I should use to base my exposure times for the prints going forward. Now remember that first number in the third point that I mentioned? where you saw 2 to 20. Well, the 2 is actually the multiplier value. And what the multiplier value is, is whatever column printed the best, let's say it was column 8, your exposure values is going to be 8 multiplied by 2, which means your exposure number for your layer is going to be 16 seconds. So that's your multiplier value. If your best column was column 7, then your exposure number is going to be 7 multiplied by 2, which is 14 seconds. So keep that in mind. So this is just for your normal layers. What about your bottom layer? Well, the bottom layer as a good rule of thumb is 5 multiplied by your exposure value for your normal layers. So let's say you ended up with 10 seconds as your exposure value, then your bottom layer value would be 5 multiplied by 10 which would be 50 seconds. So now we move to point number five, which is actually printing a test print for us to be able to tell if we were successful in our resin calibration. So if you take a look at this print that I did, this is the Amerilabs print. So if you look at this print, it came out very, very well. It was not underexposed and it wasn't overexposed. You see these tiny little strands here, they were bent a little bit when I actually was very rigorous in cleaning the print, 
but outside of that this print came out very well so if you were to go to the Amerilab site they actually went through and they broke down all the different components of this particular print and one by one they tell you what is being affected it's not just about the exposure so by looking at the different parts of your print you could tell what is actually happening so i would suggest that you actually go to their site and take a look at the different components what i'm doing is i'll leave a link in the description below so that you'll be able to do and follow that yourself so there you have it guys my breakdown of doing a uv calibration for all of the different scenarios that you may encounter where you need to actually check and test and calibrate for new scenarios with your printer such as a new resin new lcd new leds new colors new pigments and everything in between i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit like and please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that little bell right there so that you'll be notified when I have a new video. Have a good one and happy printing.